Salut Cécilia. Hello. Tu t'es connecté. Yes. Quand c'était le 14 juillet hier, es, tu étais à l'ambassade Oui, 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 c'est ça. Ouais. On avait deux, deux réceptions, une le midi pour les officiels, ambassadeurs, etc. Et une le soir plus pour la communauté française. C'était euh, très bien, très, très bien. Euh, on a eu pas mal de monde. Il y avait euh, entre 80 et 100 personnes à chaque fois. Donc, mm -hmm. euh, pas mal de monde, c'était très sympa. Un peu fatigué du coup. <rire> mais euh... c'est un temps de rencontrer toutes ces personnes, de rester debout, mais, mais c'est des bons moments. Oui, ouais, c'est ça. Ouais. Et vous, comment ça s'est passé Vous aviez un événement, c'est ça, hier On avait le CEO Lunch au Sofitel ouais. avec 15 participants. Donc le format, c'est que c'est des exécutifs d'entreprise de, qui se rejoignent pour un lunch de 11h30 à 14h. Ok. Et, euh, ce qui est bien avec ce format, c'est que vu que c'est un petit euh, attendance, les gens ont bien le temps de se rencontrer. Euh, il y a Thibault et Marion qui ont déjeuné là-bas. Ah, okay, euh, et puis des nouvelles têtes, c'est ça qui est bien. C'est qu'à chaque fois, il y a des nouvelles personnes qui viennent. Donc, ouais. La, la dynamique. Ouais. Moi, j'ai pu, pu discuter avec Hélène hier soir. Elle était là. Euh, oui. Elle était sur Wellington, bon, dans le cadre du boulot, mais aussi du coup pour le, pour le, pour le 14 juillet. Donc, c'était sympa aussi d'échanger. Mmh. Tu as pu rencontrer des, des nouvelles personnes, toi, je suppose oui, oui, oui. Bah chaque, chaque année, en fait, tous les services euh, rassemblent leurs contacts. Donc, c'est l'occasion d'échanger, de, 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 de rencontrer, de parler de, de potentiels projets, etc. Donc, c'est pas mal. <rire> des fois, ça a lieu, des fois, ça n'a pas lieu. Mais voilà, au moins, au moins, ça permet de se projeter un petit peu. Il y avait euh, Doug et Valérie aussi euh, Doug qui est... euh, Oui, Doug, je ne crois pas l'avoir vu, mais Valérie était là. Ouais. D'accord. Je regarde juste mes mails. Okay. Ouais, vas-y, vas-y, fais toute la technique. Je ne veux pas te, te déranger. Je suis aussi en train d'organiser mon événement de mercredi prochain. Mercredi prochain, qu'est-ce que tu. Ouais, on fait un, une projection de documentaire calédonien à Lower Hut. OK. Donc un peu au nord de Wellington. Euh, C'est un documentaire sur le, les liens entre l'igname et les populations dans le Pacifique. Enfin, principalement en Mélanésie, donc ça traite de, enfin ça, le documentaire euh, montre les différentes pratiques et les différentes croyances autour, trois, croyances autour de l'igname entre la Nouvelle-Calédonie, le Vanuatu, les îles Salomon et la Papouasie-Nouvelle-Guinée. D'accord. Donc on va voir ça et puis ça sera suivi d'un petit Alanoa, d'une petite discussion avec on a trois, trois speakers pour l'instant. Donc, voilà. donc faut faire le programme, s'assurer de la technique, vérifier que <rire> la salle ça va bien. Ah, ah oui, c'est beaucoup d'organisation. Ouais, bah, bah, comme pour vous, j'imagine. Euh... Il ouais, y, y, y a beaucoup de logistique. Là. Attends, je regarde juste des messages, c'est pour ça que je suis en moitié ouais, ouais. Non, il n'y a pas de souci, t'inquiète. Si tu veux que je me mute... Euh... Non, non, il n'y a, a pas de mal, on est, on est bien. Ok, ça c'est bon. Et ici, il y a rien de spécifique. Ça c'est énorme. Euh, écoute, on va voir pour ça. Bonjour Maëva. Oh, bonjour. Bonjour, c'est Vincent Oui, c'est Vincent. Oui, il faut peut-être que je me présente. <rire> Enchanté, Vincent de la Chambre de commerce. Ah, bonjour. Bonjour, bonjour à toutes les deux. Bonjour, Cécilia. Cécilia. Bonjour, comment allez-vous Bien, vous Très bien, on avait hâte. Oui. <rire> c'est bon, on y est. Il y a un panéliste qui m'appelle. <rire> Alors, on a mis euh, les kakémonos euh, dans le bon ordre. Hein, donc, euh, voilà. Moi, je suis Maëva de Daviaro pour tous les Kakémonia. Et moi, je suis Frédéric Pentecost pour euh, CCI de oh. Kakémonia. Super, parfait. Ouais. Ouais. Il y en a ah, toutes les autour de nous, mais vous ne les voyez pas. Hmm. Parfait, parfait. Il y a aussi euh, Roxane Brun, euh, la directrice adjointe de la BAE, qui est présente. Il euh, y a Valérie Maton et euh, Céline Cravate de la CCI qui sont aussi présentes avec nous euh, hors champ. Super, bonjour à toutes. Bonjour à tous, bonjour. Je crois que Vincent, Vincent a eu un Sorry, I was on the phone. Ah, voilà. I had to switch uh, on mute. Welcome, Scott. 
Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Scott. Hi, Cecilia. How are you? Good, good. How are you? I'm not too bad. Long time. Yeah. You going all right in Wellington? Yeah, yeah, all good. We had the whole week of celebration with Bestia Week. Yes. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, I'll be I'll be in Auckland this weekend. If on a oh. by the the French market. Uh, oh yes, week. okay. Yeah, yeah, we'll have a. Oh, yes. I try and get there as often as possible. It's hard with with uh, little little children. <laughs> oh yeah, true. Will you actually be in Auckland this weekend, Scott? Maybe yeah, I'm based in Auckland. Yeah. Yeah. So we who are we waiting on? People connecting. Um. Oh, Scott, um, I don't know if you already met them, but um, I'll let you to meet. So my value for Choose New Caledonia, as well oh. as uh, uh, Frederick um, from, um, sorry, from CCF, from Chamber of Commerce and Industry in New Caledonia. So they'll, they'll be presenting as well. Morning. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm, I'm Scott James. I'm the market manager for Australia and the Pacific for New Zealand Trade and Enterprise, which is the New Zealand government International Business Development Agency. Okay. I am just, hello, um, Marie Thibault. I'm just going to allow you to talk. Um, this is a session uh, we started earlier with uh, panelists to uh, synchronize for the webinars that will start at 11. So if I can ask you to just reconnect at this time, that's when the, the actual webinar will start. Don't know if you, yeah, thank you very much. We just had a, a participant that connected earlier. <laughs> so we just want to, to synchronize with all the panelists first and uh, I'll log the session when, when we have all the panelists so that we are just all together. Hello, Agnès. Hi, everyone. Hi, Vincent. How are you? Doing well, doing well. I don't Hi, know Agnes. how to put on my video. Hi, everyone. I have no... Um, there you go. Normally, you can now, Agnès. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. me neither, actually. Cecilia. There we go. You can do it now. I was just speaking to Daniel. He's trying to dial in at the moment. <laughs> oh. Hi. That's um, okay. that's there's two of me now. Yeah. <laughs> um, let me know, Scott, if he has issues connecting. He's, he's dialed in, but it's it's me. There you go. So you might just have to change his name. Oh yes, it's true. Um, <laughs> Otherwise, there's two of us. I'm, I'm able to normally rename people. Yeah. Um, uh, it's just that it's tricky because you have exactly the same name too on the line. Yeah. Daniel, can you change your own name on the? No, I got it. I got it. Yeah, no worries. I got it. The ellipses, you should be able to. I made it through the. Um, even when you jumped up. That's fine. Is that updated for you guys, Scott? Yeah. There we go. Should be fine. <laughs> So we're missing Chris and Isabella, if I'm not mistaken. In. Are you able to resend them their links, Vincent? Because I didn't actually receive a link. I had to get Scott to forward me his, and the link that Christine sent out the other day was a dead link. Mm, but the link hasn't been resetted, and Christine normally shared with all the panelists yesterday. Yeah, she shared the she yeah. shared the link for the dial-in numbers. Unfortunately, it wasn't the actual link to join the webinar. Um, so I'd imagine Chris is trying to join. Okay, I'll email. Uh, I spoke to him yesterday, and he's you know he was well aware of. Okay. Then I'll just email him the the link. Oh. 
and Isabelle too. I believe she hasn't connected yet. Um, while we are uh, waiting for them, some of you have sent us uh, their slides. Thanks for that. I do have them open on my computer to display if you want, but it might be easier for you to directly share your screen and run through it, maybe more yes. fluid instead of asking to switch the slides. So yes. if you want to try the options, share screen now to see if it's functioning well, go for it. Okay. But as panelists... Can I, okay, can we try first? Definitely, go for it. <laughs> We can see well, it's on speaker view with the notes, but as soon as we switch to full screen, we should have just uh, the slide view. Okay, it's working. It's not working. I need to find how I stop the screen sharing. Screen you stop it now. It's all good. It's back to normal. Okay. okay. All right. I'll give it a go. Yeah. We can see it well, and now if you switch to presenter view or slideshow. Uh, switch around. Have you switched to, okay. Have you switched to presenter view, Scott? I have, but I'll, I'll need to um, switch my screens around. Okay, otherwise we could see what you shared well. Yeah, thank you. Um, Daniel and uh, Agnes, as you will be the facilitators, uh, simple rules to, to remind you. Sorry? Uh, if you can mute ourselves um, so we can hear us clearly. I was just saying on the, um, on the facilitation, um, speaking with the participants that connect, the attendees. Yes. Uh, just uh, mention um, that everyone is on mute, so we won't hear them. They have available a Q&A uh, uh, module that they can use to ask their questions. And when we will run the Q&A, um, you and Daniel will be able to actually read the question, select you want, the ones you want to, to ask. And uh, that's how participants will be able to interact with the panelists asking their questions. Perfect. Um, can we just make sure that all the panelists in the bottom, there's a chat window that says panelists. Can everyone just make sure they've got that up on their screen so they can see it just so it can help us with timekeeping and giving you guys some updates on how you're tracking. Um, yeah. Do you want me to rename people with panelists, Daniel, to make it easier? It should be fine because all of the panelists should have that link. So it should just, if I type a message, I'm just typing a testing message now, you should all be able to see that on your screens. Yep. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. Excellent. We got Chris that joined. And we are only missing Isabelle. Isabelle has just emailed through saying she's missing the link as yep. well. Same issue. 
And and um, it, Emily is, is with us. No, I. We uh, see. Not for, for the moment. Uh, okay. We're just calling uh, Isabel to make sure that uh, she hasn't. Uh, she it's, she's okay uh, on her own. So I'm gonna send everyone the links. Because missing uh, Emily and Isabel. Uh, yeah. Uh, Vincent. yeah. I'm gonna send all this. Mm -hmm. Vincent, while you're doing that, I'm just going to try and share my screen again. See if I can. Right. Sorry, I'll be right back. We, we can see it, Scott. But... Which screen can you see? We can see the first page about NZ2 July 21. So the, the home. The, the full screen? Yeah. OK, great. Thank you. There we go. And last webinar invitation. Invitation. OK. And, and uh, Vincent missing as well. Um, Thibaut, does he join as a panelist too? Thibaut should be joining later yeah. on at the start at 11. Okay. But he's um, that he will be I have some news from uh, Isabelle. She is trying to uh, connect uh, with the link that was uh, that was sent uh, yesterday by uh, PBC, yeah. uh, which is not uh, the same link. Uh, that um, CCFNZ uh, sent. Yeah, thanks for so that. So maybe, I've emailed maybe all, send of, all of the people with a new link, but I'm going to reply her privately with all the yes, links please. again so that we are sure she's got the, the right one. What is the link? Thanks for that. And at 10.55, um, when we'll welcome the first attendees, I'll be playing two videos from Choose New Caledonia that Madeleine, uh, Cecilia, sorry, shared with us. But otherwise, I'll wait for them to connect.
does everyone has a um, program and speaking order in mind or you want us to quickly run through it to make sure we're on the same page yeah. <clears throat> i've got the order it's fine thank you all good No news for from Isabel yet. Uh, Isabel is trying to connect. Uh, she uh, she hasn't uh, received your uh, last email yet, so I transferred again the link. But we're on the phone with her, so she is trying. Thank you very much. Any news from uh, Emily, Vincent, or not? No news. She she's included in the email I've sent. Do we have her mobile or? I'm looking for it to give her a quick call. Okay, I'm gonna to try to ring her so I mute myself. Okay, do, do, or do you want me to call her? It, it's fine, and yes, I, I'll okay. give you a try now. Okay. Agnes, do you have the um, possibility to give a try calling Emily actually? Okay, sure. Thanks. And Isabel has just joined. Excellent. Welcome, Isabella. Now we normally can hear you if you try to speak. Can you hear us, Isabel? Perfect, we can hear you. Uh, is it okay? You can hear me? Um, we can hear you. Okay. And did you have the presentation point? Yeah. So I well received your presentation, Isabella. Um, two options. Either I display it as it's open on my computer. Either you have the choice to share it on your screen. It might be easier to run through it. Just one thing with your connection. <coughs> Um, it's a bit, I don't know if you're on a Wi-Fi connection or other, um, but I'm afraid it would cut if you share the screen. You can give it a try, actually, if you want to share the screen now to see if your if your um, um, machine is working. Are you still with us, Isabel? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Um, I don't know with the internet, so I don't know which solution is better. 
I, I can't hear you. It's not very fine. Okay. Then if you're on the Wi-Fi and the, it's the best network you can have, I would suggest maybe you turn off the camera, your video, so that the sound will be clear. Might be the best solution. Otherwise, if you have a stronger network you could you could connect on, that would be fantastic. It's about to be 10.55, so we're going to welcome our first attendees and I'll start displaying the videos and hopefully Emily will connect in the meantime. Daniel, Agnès, would you like to welcome the attendees and give an overview of the Q&A rules before I launch the videos? Hey guys, welcome on board. Thanks for coming along to our webinar presentation today. My name is Daniel. I'm the chair of the New Zealand Pacific Business Council. Uh, just while we wait for a few other attendees to join in, uh, you guys will be on mute. I'll follow up a few housekeeping rules shortly. Um, we're going to play a video for you in about a minute's time, and then we'll launch into our formal introduction. Bonjour et bienvenue en Nouvelle-Calédonie. Notre archipel est une terre de pionniers, riche de son identité française et océanienne. Une terre d'innovation, tournée vers le monde et ouverte aux investisseurs de tous horizons. Avec les trois provinces, nous avons placé le développement économique au cœur de nos priorités pour vous permettre de profiter de nombreuses opportunités. La Nouvelle-Calédonie est pleine de ressources. C'est un pays jeune, ambitieux, fier de la diversité de ses cultures et confiant dans son avenir. Situé au centre d'un environnement régional dynamique, nous avons tissé des liens privilégiés avec des partenaires commerciaux dans toute la région et nous sommes pleinement intégrés 
aux organisations internationales. Le port autonome de Nouméa est ainsi le premier port de l'outre-mer français, tandis que l'aéroport international dessert l'Australie, la Nouvelle-Zélande ou encore le Japon et l'Europe. En plus de ce positionnement géographique favorable, la Nouvelle-Calédonie dispose d'un outil industriel performant, innovant et aligné sur les normes européennes. Le territoire est également doté d'infrastructures modernes et de premier plan en matière de télécommunications, de transport ou de santé. Plusieurs organismes bancaires de recherche, d'éducation et de formation renforcent notre ambition d'investir sans cesse dans un avenir durable et responsable. Car la Nouvelle-Calédonie est un hotspot reconnu de biodiversité, un archipel magnifique à la nature préservée et valorisée dans une alliance subtile entre tradition et modernité. Dans un territoire baigné par la mer de corail et entouré du plus beau lagon du monde, vous serez accueilli de façon chaleureuse et bienveillante et vous pourrez bénéficier de services de qualité et d'un cadre de vie et de travail exceptionnel. Le développement économique de la Nouvelle-Calédonie se conjugue au pluriel et se veut au bénéfice de tous. Nous recherchons des partenaires avec qui nouer une relation de confiance et écrire une nouvelle page de notre histoire économique. Pour cela, nous vous aiderons à trouver des opportunités sur le territoire et nous serons à vos côtés durant toutes les étapes de votre investissement. Alors si vous souhaitez investir, choisissez la Nouvelle-Calédonie. Kia bonjour, good morning, I'll try that with mute off. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar on business and investment opportunities for New Zealand businesses in New Caledonia, but also on strategies for helping the continuity of existing trades, the development of opportunities and the strengthening of trade relations with New Zealand. My name is Daniel Ludlam. I'm the chair at New Zealand Pacific Business Council. New Zealand Pacific Business Council's objective is to promote and facilitate two-way trade between New Zealand and the 26 Pacific Island nations of Polynesia, Melanesia, and Micronesia. Just to cover off a little housekeeping before we get started, you should all be auto-muted. If you find yourself not on mute, please mute yourself. As we work our way through, uh, you will stay on mute the whole time. There is a little button down the bottom of your screen called Q&A. It would be great if you could ask some questions throughout that, and I'll be facilitating a session at the end of today answering some of those questions back to the speakers. Any questions that we don't have time to cover off, we'll reach out to the individual speakers and ask for them to be covered off as we follow through. If there's anything else you need, there is a little chat function in there. You can address the chat uh, to the panelists and we can assist you throughout today. I'm gonna hand you over to Agnes for a short introduction on our co-partners for today's event. And she'll be introducing you to our wonderful lineup of speakers today. Great to have you all on board. Thanks, Daniel. Uh, kia ora, uh, bonjour à tous. Um, so, um, uh, can, can you all hear me? That's all good? Tim, Vincent, yeah, okay, great. So, uh, I'm Agnès, I'm the uh, first French accent of the, of the webinar, and maybe not, uh, maybe not the last one uh, today. I'm a board member at the French New Zealand Chamber of Commerce, and I'm in charge of the Pacific Island Committee. Uh, and I'm as well the, the CEO of a food business here in, in the South Island and, and I manage all Pacific region for our mother company and I trade in New Caledonia where a part of my family lives uh, and I trade in French Polynesia where I grew up. So very close uh, uh, to, to, to the, the Pacific Island region. Uh, at the French New Zealand Chamber of Commerce, uh, we are really delighted to co-organize uh, this webinar and to meet you all today. The, the, the purpose of the chamber is really to promote and to extend uh, economic, social and commercial relationship uh, or investment between New Zealand, France and French Pacific Islands. Uh, and this is definitely what uh, we want to achieve uh, today with you. Uh, the objective of this specific uh, webinar, as Daniel was saying, is really to provide to you all an understanding of the business and the investment opportunities available in New Caledonia and to share feedback or experience about the do's and don'ts uh, of conducting a business in the region. Uh, 
So we are really fortunate to have an outstanding panel of speakers today uh, who represent both government and uh, private sector. So in the order of speech, uh, we will have the, the privilege to hear uh, Maeva Leroux, uh, who is the head of the Internal Market and Investment Department for Choose New Caledonia. Uh, Frédéric Pentecost, uh, who is board member and treasurer of the CC Nouvelle Calédonie, which is the New Caledonia Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Emily Hea Katrawi, uh, who is uh, the Charge de Mission, so in charge of partnership, external relations, and protocol for the Loyalty Island Province Secretariat. Uh, Isabelle Laran, uh, who is the reference for Choose uh, Province Sud uh, at the Investors Office at the South uh, Province of New Caledonia. Chris Freer, uh, who is the Business Development Manager for Tonkin and Taylor International. Uh, and Scott James, who is the market manager for Australia and Pacific for NZT, New Zealand Trend and Enterprise. So, so we will uh, we will have uh, we have a real outstanding panel of speakers today. And uh, and and just before handing out to Maeva, just wanted to thank um, Catherine Sumter, Christine Conan, and Vincent Labrador for all the involvement and the hard work they have uh, put into the, the the webinar today. So thank you everyone for attending the webinar, and we welcome uh, Maeva for. Our first speaker. Hello, uh, I'll, I'll just um, start. I'm Frederick Pentecost and I am going to hand over um, the communication with Maeva. So I come from the um, Chamber of Commerce. I've been there for about seven years and I'm a CEO um, of a family company that trades in, um, in commerce in the um, shrimp uh, industry, local industry in New Caledonia and um, other car dealership sector. So um, probably about six generations in New Caledonia, so it's been a long time, and um, hopefully we will um, develop uh, more just after. Thank you, Frederick. Uh, my name is uh, Maeva Lohu. I'm uh, head of, um, of uh, the, um, the service that uh, handle um, Choose New Caledonia. Um, thank you for uh, for attending this webinar. We are very glad uh, to uh, to have the opportunity to exchange uh, with you uh, on the business opportunities uh, in New Caledonia. Uh, we've decided uh, through New Caledonia and the Chamber of Commerce and Industry uh, to talk together to join our voices, um, the voices of administration and the private sector. And our goal with this presentation is to inform you on. Uh, New Caledonia, uh, New Caledonia's key figures and uh, facts, so that uh, you have um, a global vision of um, on uh, the context of our country and um, and uh, how uh, how we can uh, make business in our island. And uh, then after our uh, talk, our colleagues from uh, the provinces. Uh, will be uh, able to talk to you about business opportunities in their specific territory. So, if it's okay with you, I'll uh, share my screen. So, this is the, the presentation of New Caledonia. So, it is located in the center of the South Pacific and the Melanesian uh, area. It is only at 1,000 kilometers north of New Zealand, which is less than a three-hour flight from New Zealand. It is a French territory. We're associated member of the European Union, being a French territory. And we benefit from a very stable environment as regarding to um, legal matters, security and um, currency, because we're directly um, connected with the European um, Euro and we have a direct parity for um, one euro is 119 francs, which is approximately one dollar, one dollar and 68 um, cents New Zealand uh, dollar. Um, so the population of New Caledonia is uh, approximately 270,000 people. Uh, French is the official language. There are, of course, 27 other languages throughout New Caledonia from the South Province to the North Province to the islands. And Excuse the me, can you just put as a full screen, please? Oh, sorry. Can you put your printer as a full screen? How can we do that? Just 
on the PowerPoint on the bottom right, you should be able to put full screen because we don't see otherwise. Can you can you see it? It's on full screen uh, from our side. Ah, okay. So is it from your side? Or maybe Vincent should um does Vincent want to take over? Um, maybe. Because we haven't over, changed this slide. I can take over to to put it in full screen. Do that really quickly. Yes, yes. Please, thank you. It will be easier. It's going to be quick. Do you have it? Can you? I have it. Yes, second slide. Is it in full screen now for you guys? Yes, all good. Thanks. Excellent. I'll put myself okay. in mute and just let me know when you want to switch slides. Thank you. So the, these are a few slides of the position of the New Caledonia in the Melanesian uh, part of the Pacific Islands. And so you have the um, the, the total area, the, the direct parity from franc to euro. It's a French language, um, a mainly French language territory. Of course, there are 27 other dialects from the Melanesian uh, population people, but mostly the French is spoken throughout the country. The population is around 270,000 people. The average age is about 33 years old, average age, and the annual GDP is $9.77 billion. And so the territory, as you see, is divided into three provinces. So those provinces um, share um, their own um, administrative uh, constraints, so that will be further explained after. So this is a quick look. I will send over to um, Maeva for the third slide. You can change your slide, please, Vincent. So um, here in Ukraine, we have a very unique environment, uh, thanks to uh, a good weather and uh, cultural diversity. Uh, New Caledonia offers a pleasant quality of life to those who wish to settle down on its territory. Um, it's an exceptional biodiversity. Its exceptional biodiversity offers numerous development opportunities. Uh, New Caledonia represents the fourth largest marine protected area in the world, with uh, 1.4 uh, million of uh, kilometers square, and it is the second largest barrier reef in the world. And our flora has the third highest rate of endemism in the world. Those are just examples of uh, how um, um, unique, unique is, uh, is uh, our uh, environment here in Ukraine. And protect this exceptional environment, reduce impact of activities and enhance natural heritage is a priority in New Caledonia. And uh, it represents a source of wealth for the Caledonian economy and uh, also strong uh, investments opportunities. Please, uh, Marcel, you can change, thanks. Thank you. So New Caledonia may be an island, of course, but we are strongly connected to the world as our international airport is one of the largest of the Pacific Islands. New Caledonia is located on major maritime roads and New Mist Port is the fifth largest in the area in terms of volumes. It handles around 5 million tons of cargo every year. The 4G mobile phone covers more than 80% um, of the territory, such as a super-fast digital network, thanks to undersea cables for both um, domestic uh, digital communications and international communications as well. Uh, fiber optic is also developing at the moment, so we are gradually getting there. Um, the domestic transport is also quite efficient because we have a, a domestic airfield right throughout New Caledonia and that provides a regular service to around 10 destinations from north to south to, to the Loyalty Islands and the, the, the network covers around 5,400 kilometres. Um, public transport is developing as well, um, mainly through the, um, the bus uh, network around the island and um, throughout the boat services um, to the islands, um, especially for tourism and for people to come uh, back and forth from the different um, territories. So that's the um, that's how we are connected actually to the world. Um, Ukraine has also uh, uh, the highest level of development 
of any South Pacific island territory thanks to an efficient public service and modern research units such as IRD, TIRAD, etc. Um, the, those um, research units are grouped together with the university in a consortium named CRESICA, which is uh, very important uh, uh, as uh, they um, Uh, they, uh, they join forces to, to make uh, research uh, uh, go on. The territory can count on world-class health facilities, including an oncology unit that uses the most advanced treatment techniques developed in France in partnership with the Curie Institute, as well as an ultra-modern private clinic. Nucleonia has also boosted its healthcare facilities in North Provence by investing investing in the construction of a health hub in Kone, which is the, the main town uh, in the North Province. Um, and education is uh, also, uh, uh, it, it corresponds to French, French standards. Students have also have the opportunities to study in uh, Europe and in New Zealand and in Australia thanks to equivalences between diplomas so uh, if you choose to invest in UK, then yeah, you'll find as uh, well um, you, you'll find uh, uh, a safe place for your health, but also you'll find um, people to work with you uh, with a, a good uh, education. Thank you, Vincent. So locally, the the business ecosystem is quite dynamic. Um, there are around um, thirty-eight thousand um, different companies throughout the country, it is um, quite favorable um, to business development. The dense network comprises, well, of course, public organizations, but many, many, many private organizations, which can be very small uh, organizations too. It facilitates entrepreneurship in a range, in a range of different fields. In the private sector, um, these last years, they have developed um, clusters which um, uh, in different areas such as the, the, the sea industry, the eco-construction, the natural products, the export fields, the digital areas, the agro-food, as well as energy management. Um, so those clusters enable people to, to, um, to meet up and to develop more uh, structured areas in those, in those fields. And it offers networking opportunities and support. In addition to these organizations, the business service sector is well developed. There is quite a range of research firms which have rapidly grown in these recent years, and they offer administrative and technical support to entrepreneurs as well. We have incubators that support innovative projects and co-working um, facilities, um, which enables exchanges between companies. And um, the, the different services from um, the administrations, the province administrations, as well as the consular chambers are also available to support investors and to manage to, to install those different companies in UK. Finally, in certain cases, it's possible to benefit from tax and investment aid as well. For example, the provinces recently have created the possibility of um, developing um, firms in free zones which don't support um, as many taxes as other areas which are more developed today. Thank you, Vincent, for the change. Um, foreign investors are, are very welcome in UK Dunia because uh, UK Dunia has experienced a significant period of growth over the past three decades which led with the support of our uh, state, I mean the French state, to the to the high development of its health and education system, as well as its e equipment. And um, nevertheless, many challenges over the coming years still remain to be met in order to improve the quality of life uh, of its citizens, to reduce the ecological footprint of its activities and boost its economy. That's why Nicaledonia's government welcomes foreign investors to settle down on our territory as they can help local business ecosystem to develop and diversify with the creation of activities generating jobs and local added value. 
So we've put a few words um, up onto the screens, like skills, like um, uh, possibilities to have finance from the banking um, sector, the, the, the opportunities that different markets can, uh, can offer as well, as well as partnership. Because um, in Caledonia, we, many things can be developed. We were mainly uh, concentrated these last uh, few hundred years on the mining industry. And it's the, the mining industry have permitted a, a, a quite a, a, a development throughout the country. But now we have to concentrate on uh, more opportunities for, um, for job creation, such as um, development of tourism, as the aquaculture, mainly as um, culture. So there are quite quite a few things that can be developed in partnership with um, New Zealand as well, because we have probably the uh, common interests like the cruising industry, um, the the skills, the you know the the university, the, the different training industry that can be developed as well. So um, I guess the future is before us now. Thank you. Um, so this is our last uh, last slide, and uh, this slide is uh, is to present you Choose Nikkei Dunya. Choose Nikkei Dunya um, is um, was launched uh, by uh, the government of Nikkei Dunya uh, uh, to support international investors in the realization of their plans to do business and settle down in the country. Our objective is to promote the assets of Nikkei Dunya as a place of international economic opportunities. Um, our objective is also to inform project leaders about New Caledonia and its investment opportunities. And with the provinces, the three provinces, New Caledonia supports investors in a personal, personalized way for, for, the, for the realization of their project. New Caledonia, uh, as a government, but also as provinces, uh, will follow you from the start of your project to its outcome and uh, and uh, we will be the reference um, for your project. Um, so two uh, two of the provinces are here today: as, um, uh, Royal Royalty Island um, with Emily Katrawi and uh, South Province uh, with uh, Isabel Laran. And uh, they are here today and they'll present uh, key sectors and projects that, that matter in their territory. Um, we have to excuse uh, North Province that couldn't be represented, but uh, several uh, opportunities exist in their territory, so uh, maybe later they'll stand. Uh, so, um, Hal, uh, it's, uh, it's done, uh, it's okay, we, we are we okay on, uh, on our side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maivain. Thank you very much, Maivain Frédéric. So, perfect transition. So, now the uh, Emily from the Loyalty Island Province. Uh, it's your it's your turn. Emily, you need to unmute. Yeah, you are muted. So, just. C'est bon. Yes. Thank you. Kia ora everybody, uh, Bozu from uh, LIFO. Uh, so uh, the, um, I'm in charge of the regional corporation from, for the Loyalty Island. And um, um, I want to present the, the province and um, the project of the province. So the Loyalty province is a part of a model of a social and solidarity economic development and a win-win public-private partnership. We have a population of uh, 18,353 people spread out of uh, four uh, islands, Lifu, Mare, Uvea, and Tiga. The largest of the island, Lifu, has more than 9,000 inhabitants. Uh, each province has uh, ju jurisdiction over economic development and the new Caledonia government has ju jurisdiction of uh, legislation. We cannot talk about economic development in the Loyalty Province without resolving uh, the transportation issue, which is why the Loyalty Province is setting up its international airport and its air company, Aeroceania, 
which will have three major interests, opening up the loyalty population, attract more tourist investor directly from the region of the Pacific, provides a relay, a relay airport to the island, in addition to Tamputa International Airport based in the Southern Province. The island province is made up of 100% customary land with these chieftains, and that is why partnership with the customary is important. The province of the island has signed with its customary representatives an act of agreement prior to any economic project that would take place on customary land. It also guarantees investors the availability of spaces for the operation of their business and their security. Free zones allowing the provision of dedicated zone with tax incentives. A project that the Loyalty Province is developing is the creation of a canoe with a sustainable development um, mode with the use of solar panel, low carbon impact that allows the transport of people, freight transport up to one ton, the link between the island. The Loyalty Province is also working on setting up a coral farm. How to make the impact of mass tourism we managed to restore coral gardens. The degradation of the reef has been noted through the arrival of cruise ships. The goal for the Loyalty Province is to restore the coral garden in partnership with the tribe, the tourists and the potential investor, investors that will participate to this program. We also need your skill and knowledge which is apart from a collaborating, collaborative vision of the country of the, the Pacific, that what we are Pacific Islanders. We're delight, delighted to be able to participate in these exchanges and to place the loyalty province in a model of social and solidarity based economic development that will allow our people of the tribe to continue to live at home, to work and welcome investors who wish to settle in the Loyalty Island. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I just want to add that um, uh, we will present in the next day the project of the Choose Royalty Island to our president. Uh, that's why we cannot uh, present now the the PowerPoint. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Emily. Uh, Isabel, uh, are you ready? Yeah. So Isabel Laurent from uh, Choose Province Sud. Welcome. Yeah. I will try to put the PowerPoint. Is it, is it okay for you? Can you see it? Not for the moment. No. Okay. Okay, excuse me. Mm -hmm. I don't Isabella, don't hesitate. I've got your presentation ready. And um, it's okay, you can do for me? Definitely. Yeah. So I'll put it up, mute okay. myself, and you Great. can thank you. Through. It's so, okay, you can yeah. go now. Just moment it will be up in a second <laughs> there we go ah great thank you I'll go in full screen yeah there we go is it all good okay thank you just let me know when so you uh, good sorry sorry i said just okay. let me know when okay. you need to change slides Okay, uh, you can stay here, it's okay, thank you. So good morning, everyone. I'm glad to be with you today. I'm in charge of the Investors Office of the Southern Province, which supports investors in their establishment. I'm going to present the strengths and opportunities of the Southern Province. Next slide, please. 
Yes, thank you. And you can go on. Um, to give you the context, the southern province represents 74% of the population of New Caledonia. Um, it includes 75% of companies and 80% of jobs for 81% of GDP. Numea, the capital, is uh, located in the southern province. Its commercial port is in second position, the overseas territories. You can also find the international airport as well as the main infrastructures and activities. These elements are mainly concentrated in Numea and its surroundings, as you can see. Next, please. I will begin the presentation of the priority sectors by agriculture and food industry, which cover only 15% of the population's needs, leaving a large place for import. The objective is to reach 30% by 2025 through a diversification of our agriculture, mainly organic, and the development of processing industry. The recovery of industry's waste is also a priority for the province that offers incentives to access lands and finance projects. Thank you. Next, please. <laughs> okay. And we continue with the green economy, which is turned towards environmental protection. For example, this Caledonian startup, which has developed an uh, innovative project we call TOE to analyze the quality of freshwater and seawater. Waste recovery is another priority for, with 400 kilo per person of household waste. This is why the Southern Province is carrying out the project of an eco pole to group private recycling structures. The province also aims to give a new direction to sustainable tourism by developing, developing ecotourism. And we are also supporting the eco-construction sector with many projects, such as the establishment of a paper recycling factory to produce cellulose, cellulose wadding. Next, please. Um, the blue economy is full of potentials and New Caledonia's ambition is to become a regional maritime hub. That's why one of the main projects is the development of Port Nambu to make it a maritime center of excellence. The Abisa project, the photo you can see at the bottom right, which will be based in Pornambu, aims to carry out deep underwater observation to feed physical and geological data. We also want to diversify our seafood products and boost research on algae and venoms, which have virtues for medicine, cosmetics, and etc. Um, next, please. Finally, the Southern Province has set up a specific fund to boost innovation because only 1% of GDP is currently devoted in research and development. Some innovative projects are born, half of them are digital, such as the Testeum project, which is, which is offering an innovative test solution for websites quality. E-commerce is also booming in New Caledonia, especially since the health crisis. I've now finished the presentation. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. For, thank you very much, uh, Isabel. An innovative uh, test solution for web. Can you hear me? Uh, we have a black screen here. Yeah, we, we hear you yeah, well. Okay. okay, thank you. Chris, are you ready to go? So Chris, uh, free from Tonkin and Taylor International. Uh, kia ora and uh, bonjour to everyone this morning. And thank you very much for the opportunity to present a background of um, our company's experience in New Caledonia. 
so what I'll give this morning is just an oversight of um, what projects we've undertaken. Um, and our experience in setting up business, um, importance of local partnerships, um, some uh, observations around language and communication. So okay, our firm is a New Zealand based uh, consultancy with specialist expertise in natural hazards, uh, environmental, geotechnical, civil and water resource engineering. So we're the third largest consultancy practice in New Zealand and have a staff of around 1,000 um, with offices in New Zealand and Australia and affiliations with uh, a number of companies in several Pacific Island countries, including New Caledonia. So we've been active in the Pacific region for around 50 years. So just moving on to our history of work in New Caledonia. Um, which dates back to around 1970, uh, when we first undertook a, um, a hydroelectric uh, dam study for a mining sector client. So since then, uh, we've undertaken a range of engineering and environmental mm -hmm. studies in both the private sector and for also government funded work. Uh, so some of the key highlights uh, have been the uh, investigations for the uh, Guara Deva Hotel development, um, a coastal study for SLM mining. We did a technical review for a marine sand mining project. Um, the, the largest project up there that we've been involved in is um, design support for a wharf, which was built at Coniambo uh, Mine for the start of construction. And uh, most recently, we've undertaken the investigations for the government funded bridge replacement on Uvea uh, and the Lord Islands, um, which we understand is currently under construction. So just a, a brief outline of, of our experience. Um, first of all, in setting up business, uh, overall, um, it's relatively straightforward. Uh, we used KPMG to register uh, local business and um, they've been responsible for tax returns for us. Um, I think it's also valuable to have uh, contacts with a local law firm. Um, French law is, is not dissimilar to uh, New Zealand law with respect to liability. And, and for us as a consulting engineering practice, that was important to um, have that alignment. Uh, local partnerships are, are really invaluable um, and having an association with a local firm is important. And what we found is local businesses were more than welcome um, the opportunity for partnerships where there's specialist knowledge and, and expertise that can be provided. So this has been important to us in the mining industry and also in the building and land development market as well. Um, just some observations around language. Uh, so my initial impressions were that I'd have to speak French and uh, I did a business language course with uh, Alliance Francaise uh, here in New Zealand. Um, what I actually found was that in most meetings, uh, local business people were only too happy to, uh, to speak English. Um, and that's been the case on most of our projects. Um, but you do need to be aware that, that all written communication uh, needs to be in French. And um, we now have our own uh, French national staff um, providing this role, as well as um, supporting our business opportunities up there. So look, in closing, uh, just few points just to go over is that um, we found setting up business in New Caledonia was relatively easy. Um, there's very good support from local firms. Uh, associations with local companies are invaluable. You do need to have capability in written French language, um, either through translation services or your own staff. And I guess lastly, one of the most important uh, observations is that 
New Zealand uh, values the importance of its uh, multicultural society. And our experience, uh, especially in the project and uh, on Ovea, was that this understanding helped create, create a strong sense of trust with the local community. So, um, yeah, that's my observations and, and our um, business experience up in New Caledonia. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Chris, for your insightful and, and very positive uh, feedback and experience. So uh, thanks. Very, very nice to, to hear, uh, despite uh, the few roadblocks. So thanks a lot. Uh, Scott, uh, you are our last uh, speaker today. Good morning. Bonjour. Hi, hi Scott. Hi. I'll just share my screen. Hopefully everybody can see that. In full yeah. Square, yeah. Yep, perfect. Uh, yeah, good morning, everybody. My name's Scott James. I'm the market manager for Australia and the Pacific for New Zealand Trade and Enterprise. Just really want to take the opportunity to say thanks very much to uh, New Zealand Pacific Business Council and the French uh, New Zealand Chamber for asking me to come and uh, chat to you all about uh, the support we provide for New Zealand exporters. Um, before I sort of get into it, just a, just a little bit of context around uh, why we do what we do. Um, uh, I don't think any of this will be um, not known uh, by our viewers this morning, but um, New Zealand's obviously, it's, it's a relatively small market, um, it's, and it's a long way away from, I guess, the Europe and North America and, and what have you. Uh, as a as a trading nation, um, we need to sell uh, and and trade and export uh, to prosper. Um, uh, we have, I guess, an absence of scaled up uh, big companies, um, and we have an absence of investable propositions in New Zealand. So, really, New Zealand trade and enterprise is trying to support um, uh, the country get over some of those challenges. So as I said, um, uh, NZTE is New Zealand's International Business Development Agency. Our, co our core role is around helping New Zealand businesses uh, grow uh, internationally. Um, and our purpose is there on the screen. Um, it's to grow companies internationally, bigger, better, faster for the benefit of New Zealand or the good of New Zealand. Um, just so you're aware, we're a crown entity. Um, and we have the chair of our board is, is Andrew Ferrier, uh, who's ex, the ex-CEO of Fonterra. Um, we really rely on our know-how and our know-who. Um, and I guess uh, our global presence enables us to deliver value for our customers, our exporters, through our know-how for international growth and our know-who to make the right connections along the way. Um, so having people in locations around the world gives us that in-depth knowledge and experience around how to compete in a range of markets, um, and that's really our know-how. And our know-who is the global network of, of people um, in New Zealand and around the world who we can call upon, I guess, to support our customers, and that's, that's the know-who. Um, so what we do... Um, we provide customised services and support to ambitious businesses looking to go global. Um, we help them build their capability, boost their global reach, um, connect with other businesses and invest in their growth. Um, a big part of what we do um, through our investment team is around connecting international investors to opportunities here in New Zealand. Um, flick through uh, slides um, and uh, as, as mentioned a big part of, of also what we're doing is via our international footprint um, so we've um, split the world I guess into seven international regions um, and New Caledonia in particular is part of our Australia Pacific um, area uh, it's led by the team in Sydney, um, and I, as the market manager in, based in Auckland, have responsibility for the Pacific. Um, the Pacific 
uh, is a little bit different um, to the rest of the world. Um, we have, as, as I said, 40 different international offices in the Pacific. Um, we have the one NZTE office. So we've just, uh, we've just made an appointment uh, for a new trade commissioner for the Pacific. They're going to be based in Suva in Fiji. Um, but I guess what's a little bit unique about doing business in this particular region uh, is that throughout the Pacific, we work really closely with our NZ Inc partners, so the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade, um, and in particular in New Caledonia, it's really the Consulate General um, and Felicity Roxburgh and the team up there. Um, this is just a little snapshot uh, of who we work with. Um, so there's around about 12,000 exporters uh, in New Zealand. NZTE works or has a relationship with about 6,500 of those. Uh, roughly 14 are um, uh, what we call focus customers. Um, so there's, there's uh, I guess with these companies, there's a real hunger and ambition um, to grow internationally. Uh, and we are able to add value, maximum value with these companies. Um, and we also have, I guess, what we would call a lighter touch engagement with around about 5,000 uh, different exporters. Um, I wanted to highlight uh, briefly um, the uh, uh, briefly, the MyNZTE um, online uh, service, so anybody can go on here, you can register uh, and you can log in and have access to comprehensive market guides, um, videos, anything that's going to support um, uh, exporters along the way. I know we're pretty much out of time. Um, so just going to quickly whip through these last, this last slide, uh, I guess just really this is about highlighting the fact that we work with companies at any stage uh, and we try to develop a bespoke plan uh, of support around uh, an exporter regardless of where they are on their export journey. Uh, last couple of slides, uh, just in terms of working with us, um, so we're always on the lookout for businesses that we don't work with. Um, first step is to give us a call, uh, to go onto that uh, aforementioned website, MyNZTE, or you're more than welcome to, to get in contact with me. Thanks very much. Awesome, thank you very much, Scott, and a huge thanks to all of our speakers today. We have got a few minutes for a couple of questions and answers. So we're gonna start off our first question from OSS Group, and this is probably gonna be for you, Emily, is uh, what level of internet connectivity is available on the Grand today and the Loyalty Islands? Um, maybe I can uh, start uh, for uh, the, the Grand Island. Um, the, with uh, AD cell, the internet connectivity, uh, ter uh, um, ter theoretically, uh, the downward flow can be up to uh, 16 megabits per second, and the theoretical uh, upward flow uh, can be up to uh, uh, 800 kilobit per second. Is that clear? Yeah. yeah, but yeah. but if uh, if uh, when uh, when the, the optic fiber will uh, will be uh, available, it's not uh, it's it's uh, developing. Uh, so uh, soon uh, we'll have a uh, fiber optic uh, everywhere in the New Caledonia, Grand Island, and also in the in the loyalty island. I think uh, it will be up to uh, one gigabit per second. So that's uh, for the um, the internet. Uh, uh, the computer, but uh, for the mobile phone, we uh, we have uh, a 3G uh, everywhere in New Caledonia, and 4G is also available uh, most of the time. Perfect. Did you have something to add to that one, Chris? Yeah. Uh, look, um, we're obviously relying on internet services um, on Ovea when we did the, um, the bridge project and found they were fine. I mean, we uh, our Field crew just went down to the local hotel, and um, you know, there's good good internet connections. Work well. No, that's perfect. That's perfect. And second question coming through from Rob Craner: When considering partnerships, do New Caledonian companies have a preference for working with the French European partners, or are there equal opportunities when working with New Zealand-based companies? Yeah. 
Um, we, uh, I, I, I'll let uh, the private sector maybe answer. Okay. Yes. Uh, I think uh, we're very interested with the New Zealand partners because Europe is quite far, actually. Um, so we, we're open to all different partnerships. So of course, it's a French language area, so it's easier sometimes to have French-speaking people. But then we're islanders. We're far away from Europe, like New Zealand. So I think it's quite interesting. The only, um, the only uh, downturn of the whole thing is the difference in um, in the in the standards, like electrical standards or construction standards. We'll, we'll probably be more close to the um, European standards required for the for the local constructions, uh, for example, uh, which could be a bit different from Australia or New Zealand. That would be the only thing that we should. Um, uh, look at, but uh, eventually um, the local businesses, uh, the local um, um, legislation has changed recently on those um, on those standards. So now, if we can prove that um, uh, it stands up to you know very big wins like the cyclones or whatever, um, then you know standards from New Zealand or Australia could be accepted. That's awesome. Thank you. We've got time for uh, two more questions quickly. Um, Daniel, one of the hot topics. Yep. Can, I, can I just add a comment there? Um, and that's exactly relevant to the standards issue. So one of the projects that we did up there was around um, supporting a local contractor to have um, the use of um, New Zealand sourced timber pile foundations certified um, so we did a research project and provided him with documentation and that worked well and uh, we looked at relevant European standards um, and uh, so he was able to use uh, New Zealand products for his um, house projects up there. That's awesome thanks Preston and uh, my company is actually Timber Baron we supply a lot of timber into New Caledonia and we do supply a bunch of uh, house piles and things like that. Similarly, mm. uh, we're going to down to one last question. We're going to hit uh, hit it last with the hot topic of the moment. Everyone else has asked questions. We will endeavour to get answers to those and get them back to you. They'll go up on the NZPBC LinkedIn page. So make sure you give us a follow there and see those answers there. And we'll try and get them emailed out to all attendees as well. Final question: We'll see if we've got any input or answers from anyone on this one. Are New Zealand and New Caledonia governments currently discussing a potential travel bubble? Has anyone got an insight on that? Look, um, what I would say is that through our network of, of MFAT officers, through the High Commissions and the Consulate Generals, um, uh, New Zealand uh, and New, New Caledonia in particular, there will be conversations going on constantly um, around uh, the travel situation. Um, but I, I would hazard a guess that at the moment, uh, the focus is very much on the, the, the vaccine rollout and managing the, uh, the, the current travel bubble with Australia. Awesome. Thanks. Got anything from the New Caledonia side on that? Yeah, hi, if I can add something. So, uh, kia ora everyone. My name is Cecilia Madeline. I represent New Caledonia here in New Zealand and based in Wellington. Um, just to let you know that um, we are, uh, we have been discussing the situation both in New Caledonia and in New Zealand regarding the COVID situation. For now, the borders remain closed uh, because, as exactly as Kurt uh, said, we are working on uh, the vaccine in New Caledonia. We are between between 25 and 30 percent of the population fully vaccinated, and we're hoping to reach um, um, much higher. Um, um, let's say herd immunity by the end of the year, and we're hoping that we would be able to reopen by then. Um, it's still um, um, a maybe, not another um, uh, for sure, but we are working on that, and we are uh, discussing with New, New Zealand government uh, in terms of what's happening uh, in the region and how we can work together. Um, I would like to point out, however, that um, since uh, two or three weeks now, um, uh, there have been new um, um, airline um, uh, liaison between uh, Numea and Auckland. Uh, so we have one flight per week every, every Thursdays. 
so far it's only for goods, but um, it's good to know that we do have uh, planes flying between New Zealand and New Caledonia uh, again, since it had been almost a year since uh, that wasn't the case. So we are working on that and we're hoping that um, like um, making sure that the situation in the Pacific remains uh, safe, that we can work on that uh, further uh, by the end of the week, the year. Thanks. Perfect. Thanks, Cecilia. That brings us to the end of the webinar today from the NZPBC. Uh, a little thank you from us. Make sure to follow us on Facebook and LinkedIn. I'm just going to hand you over to Thibault to do our formal closing for the day. Over to you, Thibault. Bonjour, kia ora, everyone. Um, so thank you very much for, for attending this, um, this webinar. Uh, I think we'll all agree that uh, it's giving each of, each of us a better understanding of um, all the business opportunities um, we've got between uh, New Zealand, New Caledonia and its, its provinces. Um, Thank you very much for uh, from uh, from us uh, at the French New Zealand Chamber of Commerce, uh, the Pacific Business Council team, Daniel, Catherine, and Christine. Uh, from our side, uh, Agnès, Vincent, and and Cecilia, um, for working on on this joint initiative. Um, as a closing word, I think. Um, I would like to reinforce the huge potential um, of partnership uh, between New Zealand and, and New Caledonia. Um, we've been presented the, the, the opportunities in the market as well as the size of the market. So if we look at New Caledonia, the GDP um, is you know, $9.7 billion. If we compare to another country in the Pacific that we we really uh, deal a lot with um, from New Zealand is Fiji, uh, and Fiji is about half of that, so 5.4 million billion dollar uh, GDP. However, when we look at the two ways, uh, two way trade uh, between New Zealand and, and New Caledonia, it's only sitting at 230 million dollar compared to one billion dollar for uh, between Fiji and, and New Zealand. So I think. You know these numbers really illustrate the huge potential uh, that that exists um, either uh, for export, investments, and and partnership uh, between um, our two two countries. So um, thank you so much for attending this this webinar. Um, this webinar uh, was part of um, an initiative that that we launched here in New Zealand. Uh, which is a celebration of Basti Week, which is a series of, of events happening in, in, in Auckland, in Christchurch and, and Wellington um, online. Um, and it was fantastic uh, to be able to, uh, to speak about our, our closest French uh, neighbours um, uh, from New Caledonia. And uh, if you are interested to... Um, to hear about French Polynesia. Um, I'm sure we'll have uh, another webinar on French Polynesia over the next, next couple of months. Um, and to finish, um, I think there is, there is a lot of resources here available uh, in New Zealand to help you uh, partner with New Caledonia. So please, uh, if you have any questions, if you need any support, uh, please feel free to reach out to our two organizations. Um, as well as, of course, NZT and the representation of the, the New Caledonia government um, here in, in New Zealand that will be able to uh, put you in touch with the right contacts and provide support um, for any activities in New Caledonia. So thank you very much, everyone. Have a good day. A bientôt. A bientôt. Merci. Thank you. Thank Merci. you very much. Merci. 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 Bye. Merci. Thank you. Bye.